Hello, if you're watching this video, you probably already know what GrandMA2 and RD GMA2 tools are. But if you don't, you can check out the links on the description. In this tutorial, I will show everything you need to get your MIDI controller up and running with GrandMA2, either console or on PC software. In this case, I will be using a single computer, but it works the same way for a console and a network computer running GMA2 tools. So I will divide this tutorial in three different parts. In the first one, I'll start by the installation of the software and explain the needed configuration to connect it to GrandMA2. On the second part, I will show you how to map your device faders and buttons so that GMA2 tools knows what controls you have available. And finally, we will map the faders and the buttons to functions in GrandMA2. I will include links in the description so that you can skip to any of these parts directly if you want. So let's start with the first part, the installation. For the installation, I will assume that you already have GrandMA uh, on PC installed or, or your console ready. And for the GMA2 tools, you have to go to ricardodias.com uh, slash GMA2 tools and then you can scroll down to download and download the version that matches your uh, GrandMA2 version. You don't have to run the latest one, you just have to run one that is uh, that can run with, uh, with your version of GrandMA2. And if you open the file, just run the installation. Okay, select where you want to install what name you want to give in the start menu, if you want a shortcut in the desktop, and just install. And no, we will, will not launch it for now. Finish. Uh, so because uh, GMA Tools works uh, by using the remote connection on the GrandMA2 side, you will have to configure it the same way as if you would configure it to use the web remote. So if you open the GrandMA2 software, you can go to Setup. On console part, you select User and Profile Setup, and let's create a new user. Uh, you can give it whatever name you want, and you can set the password to whatever you want. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'll be using Remote for both the username and password. OK, then you go to Global Settings, and in the remotes, you set it to login enabled. And that's it. On the GrandMA2 side, we are uh, ready to go. And now we can open the GMA2 tools and use the credentials uh, that we that we used previously in, in GrandMA2. So the username and password that we selected, and then the IP of the console or your on PC software and if you are uh, running it on the same computer you can safely use the low loopback IP address to test if this works just click the connect button and if you see a session uh, in the connected message then you are uh, good to go this is the end of part one both programs are already connected so now for the second part I will show you how to tell GMA2 tools what faders and buttons you have so if you go to the MIDI tab you will probably have this empty and the first thing that you need to do is create a new device and because I have a APC mini here I will call it APC mini and then we have to define the input MIDI device this would be a list of the MIDI controllers that you have connected to your computer output device and then you set if you have motorized faders or not unfortunately the APC mini doesn't have motorized faders so I'll keep this a no and now the GMA2 tools tells me that I don't have any faders and I don't have any buttons because we will need to map them manually okay so if you click the button you will see uh, a window that looks like this 
and you have on the left the list of faders and the list of buttons and as of now because we just created the device the software doesn't know any faders and any buttons so we have uh, four different options here we can manually set the MIDI type this is note on, control change, pitch, etc. Uh, the channel and the data manually and then add uh, as a fader or as a button. We can learn, because we already selected the input device, GMA2 Tools is already connected to the, to the device. So if I move a, a fader, it will change the MIDI type, the channel and the data accordingly to the controller that I used. So if I press a button, it will change accordingly to the values for that button. And the, I think the best way to add faders and buttons is to use the learn fader and learn button. What learn fader does is it, it learns the these three values and adds them to the to the faders list. So you just have to select learn fader and then go through all your faders one by one in the sequence that that you want so that you can know later what fader they what faders they are and then do the same for the buttons i will do this for eight buttons here okay and essentially you have to do this for all for all your controls and for more advanced controls that have led feedback on the buttons you also have an advanced button option which you can use to set the message, the MIDI message to send to the controller in the beginning, in the initialization, when you can, when GMA2 tools connect to your device, it sends the message that you put here. You also can set the message to, to send when GMA2 tools receives from GrandMA2 uh, an on to turn on the, the LED and when it receives an off fr from the from the, the console, it will send the message that you put here. So for the Akai uh, APC Mini, I found this uh, this web page, which tells us that, for example, to light up this button, I will have to send 90, uh, zero, zero, uh, zero, 001, for example, to light it uh, green. Don't forget that this page tells us the numbers of the buttons in decimal and we have to we have to input here in hexadecimal okay so it's a little conversion that you have to do uh, if you see uh, pages like this on the web make sure that, that that you input them in hexadecimal so for the for this first uh, button i just enabled custom feedback and i will set the initialization uh, to off and in this case I'll send 90, 0 and then off let's let's start it at off and then when I receive a non from from the grand MA feedback let's set it to green which is 1 and off will be red okay and then you do this for all your buttons okay so for button 1 be this for button two for example the initialization uh, you have to change this to, this to one because it's now button one let's put it off and let's put it on will be yellow which is five and off will be red as well okay so we'll we configure this for the first two buttons you would have to do the same for for all of them and now, for the last part of the tutorial, we just have to assign functions to these faders, these nine faders, these eight buttons. We have to tell GMA2 tools what functions we would like to trigger in GrandMA. So we go here to edit the assigned functions. On the left, you see all the controls of your device. Then for, for the the selected control you have a list of events in the case of buttons you have uh, four events you have an event that is fired when you press the button which is on button down you have an event that fires up when you release the button when you stop pressing the button 
I mean the physical button, which is on button up, and then you have a duplicate of this for when you are pressing a modifier shift key. Okay, let's focus just on the on button down and on button up for now. For faders, you have just event on fader move. Each time a fader moves, then what we want we select what we want to send to Grand MA. So let's start with uh, maybe let's start with the faders. So on fader move, I want to fader one on fader move. I want to select function executor fader, and then you have here a list of parameters that depend on the function that you select. In the case of the executor fader, you just have the playback number uh, parameter. I will take this opportunity to tell you that you have a list of functions available on the website uh, that explain for each of the functions uh, what does each parameter do. So for the executor fader, we can assign the executor fader one to fader one on fader move. Okay, so you select here, you click assign and the function with the parameters that you selected will be assigned to this event of this fader. Okay, and you can do the same for all your faders. So fader two, executor fader, you write two in the parameter and you assign and you see that on fader move we are as we are assigning executor fader two to fader two and because this is usually very sequential sequential uh, I created this button which is smart assign that essentially lets you go through your list of controls and increment whatever the parameter the sequential parameter would be in this case smart assign will assign two executor fader two to this fader and then go to the next fader and automatically increment this to three and this actually helps you and you keep clicking the smart assign this will help you to map sequential uh, functions to to your list of faders or buttons we will do the same now for button one so on button down when we press button one we want to press an executor button it can be playback one the first button and we have to select behavior hold so when we press down we want to hold down the playback number one if we click smart assign uh, in this case, in the case for this function, it will not go to the next button because we selected hold and it goes to the next event which is on button up, which is when we unpress the button and it changes the behavior to release. And if, if we smart assign this, then it will go to the next button. It incremented the playback number and then it, it got back to the behavior hold. So you can just keep uh, clicking smart assign if you want the these buttons to do uh, executor buttons in a sequential way and the last one you can just press assign and we are done if we go through the list of our buttons you can see that it's just hold and release and what is incrementing is the playback the playback number okay and we did this just by clicking uh, smart assign on and on and on and now we can close when we are finished assigning our functions to our controls we can close we can connect to our media device we can connect to grand ma and now i will test i have here on executor page i have two uh, sequences and i will move faders okay so if you remember we assigned uh, red on off for both. We assigned green on for the first one and yellow for the second one. Okay, we can even activate the sequence just by pressing the button, as you know. And I can also show you the fader latching feature, which is when I uh, 
when I move the fader on the software because I don't have motorized faders then I will have to go to that level uh, in order to move the fader again okay guys so this was the a very short tutorial but I think it will give you the basis of uh, how Grand, uh, Grand MA2 can be connected to a MIDI device very easily using the GMA2 tools okay it is available under ricardodias.com slash GMA2 tools you can download it you can try it uh, but if you want to use it continuously then you have to to buy a license and you have more information on the website if you have any doubt or you have any ideas any suggestions um, please you are welcome to contact me using the the form uh, in the bottom of the page okay so see you guys on the on the next video see you guys online and thank you for watching